Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's having a good day out there today and thanks for tuning back into the video and don't get too sensitive about the title there. It's just sort of uh, having some good fun here. I did a, I had a title about uh, talking about people fishing like buzz baits like a clueless newbie last week and uh, it got a lot of views and some people got a kick out of the title and they, and they started saying I should start saying that every video. So I just threw it in there today to have a little bit of fun with you guys. But the video today, actually, I'm going to talk about the uh, transition uh, into uh, spring swim baits, basically, or uh, swim jigs into spring swim jigs. Actually, when you need to start fishing uh, swim jigs in the in the uh, springtime of the year, when that transition occurs uh, due to water temperature and some other variables. So we're going to get into that. I'm going to give you guys a bunch of good juice on that. And real quick, just wanted to give you guys a weekly reminder. If anybody out there is interested in booking an on the water lesson with me just shoot me a message on my Facebook page, a private message, and I can give you all the info for that. I've been booking trips for uh, the rest of the year here, so I'm um, much appreciated there. Okay, guys, let's talk about the swim jig deal here. Now, swim jigs, man, they're one of my favorite ways to fish, and I actually, I got in on swim jig fishing before anybody knew what swim jig fishing what even was. Back in the day, this is how swim jig fishing was developed, guys, or how it was discovered. And I was sort of in on that cutting edge of it. Back years ago, back in the 80s, um, some of us started noticing when we were pitching and flipping heavy cover, um, bushes, whatever like this, once in a while, you'd pitch your jig into the bush or into the shallow grass or whatever, and, and you'd be working it like you normally do. And you started reeling it back in to make another pitch, and a fish would come up and grab the bait while you're reeling it in. And this took place under a certain set of circumstances. So eventually it didn't take long to click for everybody to start seeing it's like, hey, there's a certain pe uh, segment of the bass that want this bait reeled in. They don't want it in the cover. They want it coming through the water column. That is how swim jig fishing was developed, sort of by chance, by, ha by happenstance. And it was, it's been perfected to a large degree since then. It's something the guy, a lot of guys didn't talk about it when it first came out. I mean, I kept it a secret. I didn't talk about it hardly in any, any at all. I knew about it for years before I even said anything about it. Obviously, there's always some guy comes along and does good in a tournament and he spills the beans on a new technique. You know, every, it happened with everything. It happened, it's happened with the whopper ploppers, happened with the A rig, it's happened with, you know, just everything like that. The swim jigs, one of them. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about, guys, when you want to make this transition into swim jig fishing. First of all, I want to show you the three different uh, colors of swim jig because that has a lot to do with the transition you make. You basically got three different uh, color patterns on a swim jig resembling a certain type of forage. You have the shad pattern, which is just some type of a white. This is a Mega Bass Uzo Swimmer swim jig. Uh, with a Zoom uh, Z swim on it. I'll include the bait works link in the description if you guys want to get some for when they're feeding on shad. And then you've got some type of a perch pattern, like a green pumpkin with some orange in there when they're feeding on, on bluegills and perch. And then you have a black and blue color, which is sort of like a crawfish imitator. It's good in dirty water, that type of stuff. Ultimately, the things that you want to key on what I found about in early spring is I don't use the bluegill pattern much. The bluegills pattern to me is more of an early summer cat pattern. So to make things simple, I'm not even going to talk about the bluegill pattern. I'm going to talk about the uh, black and blue and the shad patterns here. The thing about the black and blue and the shad patterns, guys, is they will work hand in hand together. I have seen very, very few situations where if you can get them to hit a black and blue, that you could not get them to hit some type of a white or shad pattern. So it's a lot of it is just your own preference. Sometimes if they're on a good swim jig bite, I'll have both. I'll have a shad pattern, I'll have a black and blue, and I'll mix it up. Um, so they're, you know, I got them hand in hand with that. The transition, guys, that you want to make with the swim jig has a lot to do with the water temperature and water visibility. The swim jig fishing is going to start to get really productive right before the fish get on the beds when that water temperature is in the upper 50s, like right on the verge of it. And some of the fish may even be spawning that time. For me, when I first start seeing water temperatures hit that 57, 58 degree mark, 59 degree mark, that's when I'm thinking about putting down some of my other stuff that I've been fishing, whether it be my crankbaits, spinnerbaits, jerkbaits, all that type of stuff. And that's when I'm pulling out the swim jig in that shallow cover. 
normally what you have in there is, and this is another mood personality thing about the bass, is once the bass get committed to bedding, they do not want to hit a bait that is moving horizontal through the water column. When the bass are focused on bedding, you got to have something that's on the bottom, like, you know, a Senko or a Wacky Rig or something like that, creature bait. But right before the fish get on the bed, and also right after, because a, a swim jig is really good in the post spawn too, right before and right after, they still prefer that horizontal presentation in shallow water. So when you have bass that are starting to move shallow, and they're staging, and they're setting up, and they're hunting beds, but they're actually not on the beds, and then when you have bass that have done spawned, and they're garden fry, and they're starting to move out a little bit, those are the top two times that you want to make that transition to a swim jig. Water clarity is another big thing. I like, you know, I don't like anything really over, you know, two foot of visibility. You know, for me, a good swim jig bite is anywhere between that eight inches to two, maybe two and a half feet of visibility at the most. But ideally, I'm looking for something, you know, in one to two foot visibility. That it's, You've got a combination of the, uh, you know, the to put the water that the bait's pushing and and the visual strike that comes from the swim bait most of the time i'm fishing the swim bait in sight i don't once in a while i'll drop it out of sight but most of the time i want to be able to see that bait coming through the water so i'm talking about fishing these baits just under the surface i'm talking like you know in one one to three four maybe five inches under the surface depending on the water visibility because that's when they hit it the best. That's when they hit it the hardest and the most aggressive is when you figure out the right speed that they want and keeping that bait in sight. There's a real key thing in there. Another good thing about a swim jig, guys, it's a real subtle bait. So if you have these bass that are in extremely shallow, flat water, a lot of times those bass are not secure up there. When you have a big fish in shallow water, they don't want to be there. The, a, a quality bass unless you've got a super, super heavy cover, is not comfortable in super shallow water. I'm talking about water depth under three feet. So a lot of times you need a lure presentation that's stealthy and subtle. And that's one of the great things about a swim bait or a swim jig is the subtle presentations on that. But we've done stuff on that before, guys. We've talked about trailers and this type of stuff. You can refer back to some of my other videos on that. The main thing I wanted to do in this video is keep your keep an eye an eye on the water temperature once that water temperature starts hitting 57 58 degrees pull out your swim jigs um, and then after the fish are done spawning up until that water temperature starts to get above 70 degrees keep fishing the swim jigs and the, the perch pattern swim jigs come into play in early summer when those bass start to feed on spawning bluegills usually like the first part of june can be really effective for those so Anyway, just a few tips on swim jig, guys. Um, like I said, hope you uh, can use some of these tips to catch some more bass coming up this year, and we'll check in later. See you.